drug trafficking, extortion, murder, and a run of terrifying attacks that shook Italy to its core. Matteo Messina Denaro is a ruthless playboy mafioso and womanizer who is one of the world's most sought fugitives and also the last remaining Sicilian mob leader. Being one of the most notorious killers, Matteo is also famous for living a luxurious life. He loved driving a high-end Porsche sports car and sporting a Rolex Daytona watch, along with Ray-Ban sunglasses and designer clothing from Giorgio Armani or Versace. Watch the video till the end as we tell you all there is to know about the life of Matteo Messina Denaro. Early Life Matteo Messina Denaro was born on April 26, 1962, in Castelvetrano, Sicily's Trapani province in Italy. His father, Francesco Matteo, also known as Don Siccio, was the chairman of the Trapani Mafia Commission. His father began his career as an armed guard for the Diali family, who were the affluent landowners and the founding members of the Banco Secula. It was them who gave Matteo's father a substantial estate in Castelvetrano. Matteo learned to wield a gun at the age of 14 and committed his first of many killings at the age of 18 in 1980. Matteo then became capo mandamento of the area containing Castelvetrano and the neighboring cities after his father died in November 1998. While Matteo was in charge of his domain, Vincenzo Verga ruled over Trapani and its environs. The infamous terrorist campaign. Following the bombings in Capazzi and Via D'Amalio, which killed prosecutors Giovanni Falcone and Paolo Borsellino, the arrest of Salvatore Rina on January 15, 1993, and the implementation of a strict prison regime, Cosa Nostra launched a terrorist campaign in which Matteo Messina Denaro played a key role. Matteo Messina Denaro, Giovanni Brusca, Leo Luca Bagarella, Antonino Gioi, Giuseppe Graviano, and Gio Acino La Berbera were among the remaining mafia chiefs who gathered frequently in the Santa Flavia district of Bagheria on an estate owned by mafioso Leonardo Greco. They devised a plan to push the Italian government to retreat. This resulted in a series of bombings in Florence's Via del Giorgofili, Milan's Via Palestro, Laterano's Piazza San Giovanni, and Rome's Via San Teodoro, killing a lot of people and also causing damage to cultural landmarks such as the Uffizi Gallery. On the run. Matteo also followed TV journalist Maurizio Costanzo, host of The Maurizio Costanzo Show, who narrowly avoided being killed by a car bomb. Denaro also kept track of Giovanni Falcone and Claudio Martelli, who was the Minister of Justice at that time. Matteo went into hiding in June 1993, after the massive bombings that sent everyone into frenzy. Investigators believe Matteo spent the next three years, until 1996, somewhere between Aspra and Bagheria, with his girlfriend Maria Messi with whom he also traveled on holiday to Greece, under the false name of Matteo Crazzolici. Matteo then moved in with his mother after having a daughter from an earlier relationship with Francesca Alagna. In a letter confiscated by authorities that was intended for a friend, Matteo claimed that he had never met this daughter. Matteo's girlfriend, Maria Messi, was arrested in 2000. After police discovered love letters she had written with Matteo, she was sentenced to three years in prison, along with her brother Francesco, for aiding and abetting a criminal. Investigators discovered further love letters from Maria Messi at the house of Filippo Gutaduaro, who was tasked with delivering them to his brother-in-law. Along with his girlfriend, Matteo Messina was condemned to life in prison in absentia on May 6, 2002 for his role in the 1993 bombings. New leader in town. While all hell was breaking loose, Matteo took over the leadership of the mafia in the province of Trapani after Virga was arrested in 2001. He was now in command of 900 men and had reformed Trapani's 20 mafia groups into a distinct mandamento apart from the rest of Cosa Nostra. The Trapani mafia was considered one of the most powerful groups. It was quite clear that Matteo Messina had interests in Venezuela and ties with Colombian drug trafficking groups as well as the Indragenta. His criminal networks reached as far as Belgium and Germany. They were active in cocaine trafficking in collaboration with the Plati, Marina di Gioiosa Ionica, and Siderno Indragenta clans as well as the Mariano Agate Mafia family. Matteo rose to prominence on April 12, 2001, when the journal L'Espresso featured him on the cover, with headlines proclaiming him the new Mafia boss. He had been on the FBI's most wanted list since 1993, and Forbes magazine named him one of the world's top 10 criminals. Even now, following the deaths of Bernardo Provenzano in 2016 and Salvatore Rina in 2017, Matteo is widely regarded as the undisputed head of the Mafia bosses. The Head of Mafia After Bernardo Provenzano's arrest on April 11, 2006, 
Matteo was mentioned as his successor, while Salvatore Lo Piccolo and Mimo Racuglia from Alto Fonte were said to be his major opponents. Provenzano himself nominated Matteo in one of his pizzini, which are little slips of paper used by mafiosi. Then, following the arrest of Salvatore Lo Piccolo in November 2007, Matteo was widely regarded as the top mafia boss. As a result of this, the government authorities and police refueled their struggles to catch Matteo Denaro. On November 18, 2008, Italian authorities seized 700 million euros in assets linked to Matteo from Giuseppe Gregoli, who was Sicily's store king. The authorities also seized 12 businesses, 220 real estate holdings, including villas and apartment towers, and 133 land holdings totaling 60 hectares. Authorities also confiscated documentation linking Gregoli to Matteo in the hideout where Provenzano was caught. At that time, Matteo was believed to be hiding near his family's home in Castelvetrano and traveling between safe houses. On November 15, 2009, one of the top leaders of mafia groups, Domenico Racuglia, was apprehended in a tiny village near Trapani. He was already convicted in absentia of murder and other crimes and was facing three life terms. Tightening the circle. In January 2010, police seized 550 million euros worth of construction businesses, houses, shops and vehicles from Rosario Caschio, who was a Western Sicilian construction magnate suspected of being one of Matteo's key bankrollers and money launderers. Together with assets acquired from Giuseppe Gregoli at the end of 2008 and construction tycoon Francesco Pecora in November 2009, the total value of the assets acquired crossed $1 billion. After including all other things, the total of 1.4 billion euros was confiscated, serving as a stark reminder of Matteo's deep-seated economic dominance. In September 2010, authorities seized another 1.5 billion euros in assets from Vito Nicastri, a Sicilian billionaire suspected of cooperating with Matteo. As a means of laundering money, he had invested in wind and solar energy sources. In order to apprehend Matteo, the Italian police adopted this new strategy of detaining dozens of his associates and seizing millions of euros in assets. The circle around Matteo tightened even more after the arrest of Gerlandio Messina, the alleged boss of Agrigento, on October 23, 2010, in Favara Agrigento province. Golem 2 If Matteo thought things were bad, then they got worse. As the police came with Operation Golem 2, and his brother Salvatore Matteo was arrested, together with 18 others, on March 15, 2010. All of them were members of a mafia boss's protective network, and they were tasked with handling Matteo's secret correspondence in order to keep him on the run. The court convicted all of them with mafia ties, corruption, and protection rackets. Later, on May 19, 2011, police encircled a manor farm five minutes outside Castelvetrano in an unsuccessful attempt to apprehend Matteo. They were tipped off by a secret service informant who had previously assisted in the arrests of Mafia chiefs Giuseppe Falzon and Gerlandio Messina. However, Matteo was nowhere to be found. Italian authorities then arrested Matteo's sister, Patrizia Matteo, along with numerous other Mafia members on December 13, 2013, dealing a significant blow to Matteo. She was sentenced to 14 years in jail on April 17, 2018 for Mafia affiliation, external competition and attempted extortion. In December 2014, it was reported that Matteo was on the verge of being apprehended when the Italian authorities seized 20 million euros in assets from him in the form of valuable olive trees in Trapani. Matteo was receiving funding from the Fountain of Gold olive oil business in the area. In the search for Matteo, about 200 Italian police officers executed search warrants at residences controlled by around 30 Italian mafiosi in and around Castelvetrano, Matteo's hometown. Still free. Matteo Messina Denaro is still on the run and is considered to be one of the most mysterious crime leaders currently featured in the world's most wanted list. The boss of the Cosa Nostra group has now eluded capture for nearly three decades. Matteo is unique in that he is a representative of both the ancient and new mafias, as he sees the mafia as a higher state, involving a chosen few who are worthy of the honor, much as the old mafiosi did. At the same time, he is also quite modern and only those who are close to him are allowed in his inner circle. Denaro's fortune is based on a massive extortion operation that includes forcing businesses to pay protection money and skimming public building contracts. He is also allegedly implicated in international drug trafficking with the Contrera Caruana clan, which has also drawn the attention of the U.S. Federal Bureau of Investigation. He also makes money through legitimate businesses, 
as he owns large olive fields and has stakes in a Sicilian supermarket chain. He is also believed to have ties with an olive oil production business that was corrupt and exploited cheap African labor in its early days. Matteo has deep ties to mafia factions in Palermo, particularly in Brancaccio, the Graviano family's region, as Matteo's brother-in-law, Filippo Gutaduaro, is the brother of Giuseppe Gutaduaro. Matteo Messina Denaro has a very proactive criminal mind, which is clear from the fact that despite living a lavish lifestyle and being linked to a lengthy list of crimes, he has never been caught by authorities. His famous nickname, Diabolic, was also inspired by an Italian comic book villain who always managed to get away from police. Despite his violence and links to terrorist acts, Denaro sees himself as a philosopher and folk hero. There are reports that he underwent facial repair surgery and is still living the high life, financed by unscrupulous politicians and businesses. Well, that's it for today's video. If you found this video interesting, then make sure to give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss out on any of the amazing videos we have in store for you.